here and welcome back to day 18 of my 31 frightening days of Halloween marathon. Tonight we're going to take a look at 1981's TV movie Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Now this is the, for the sake of this review this was actually my first time ever viewing this TV film and I have to say that I'm actually um, pretty pleased to tell you guys that it was actually a lot of fun. The story um, about this film is that it deals with a mentally handicapped character named Bubba, played by Larry Drake, who befriends a local, a really young, um, local little girl, and, uh, um, there are a few hillbillies in the town that kind of frown upon the fact that this overgrown man, no matter whether he's competent or not, is hanging around and playing with this little girl, so, um, one day when the little girl sneaks into someone's backyard and gets mauled by a dog, it's quickly, um, it's quickly, um, reported that she was killed in the accident. All fingers point to Bubba at this point. Um, so the four hillbillies band together to kind of execute their own form of justice against Bubba by executing him. Um, as it turns out, after they're through uh, killing him, it turns out that the little girl actually survived and Bubba actually um, saved her from, you know, a more fatal end. So, um, with all that said, um, they, the four hillbillies get acquitted of the charges by their slimy lawyer, and then it turns out that what appears to be Bubba's um, spirit, or uh, Bubba's ghost, comes back from the grave in order to extract his own revenge against the people, against the four hillbillies that killed him. This film is actually wildly considered like a real cult classic. It, it only had a small run on um, VHS way, way back in the day, like uh, a few years after it was originally debuted in 1981 on television. And uh, this was really, you know, pretty solid, and I think a lot of the credit has to go to um, the wonderful casting and work of Larry Drake, although having very limited screen time, he really accomplished a lot in um, his role as Bubba. He really captured an innocence and a real, um, you know, he really got into that character of playing a real mentally handicapped person. I mean, you really get the, the gist and vibe that he really uh, could truly be that way. So, um, you know, a lot of the credit must go to his um, his acting abilities in this. Uh, furthermore, it's just, the, the whole story is actually, you know, really solid and really coherent. Um, you know, from the second that the four hillbillies knock off Bubba's character, you really, the whole rest of the movie, you really get in their heads as to what it feels like to deal with the fact of killing an innocent man and trying to conceal it from other people. But as more time goes on and more and more of these hillbillies get kicked off, it um, slowly but surely seems that time is running out for them. But that's, you know, that's one thing that, the, that this TV movie really did well was really, you know, um, was really uh, get into that whole vibe of what it would feel like and having to deal with, you know, the pain and agony of knowing that you killed somebody and you got away with it scot-free. Um, in addition um, to the casting of Larry Drake, just everybody else in this w were really, really spot on for a TV movie. I mean, it was really surprising me just how um, just how stellar a lot of these people's um, acting jobs were, you know, for a you know, small 90-minute TV movie that probably only aired a few times uh, during its original run. So I have to say, I mean, a really, really solid job to, um, to all the actors in this film. They really did a really wonderful job. And after seeing that, I mean, all of this is not, um, you know, the most perfect film. Like I said, it is a TV movie, and, you know, um, it does have it does have its fair share of problems. I mean, personally, if I had to complain about anything, it's really that at certain point, at so certain parts of it, as much as they really explore and you get into the characters' shoes a lot and you really explore a lot about them, it tends to drag at times, so I think that can kind of... Um, kill the mood at some moments. I know that there were certain times where I was just feeling um, blatantly bored at it, but not enough for me to shut it off or, you know, completely, you know, shut it out as a bad movie. And, you know, thankfully I didn't make, um, you know, quick uh, quick judgments on it because by the time that, uh, you know, the, the film concluded, I was, you know, overall really happy with it. So, I mean, there's just, you know, certain patches where it does tend to drag, but nothing nothing that um, any, you know, any film viewer really could uh, can't handle. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, just the fact that the, you know, the film kind of does drag at times, um, you know, I guess, you know, personally for me, I would just have to say that, you know, being a sound that I had to 
work with um, you know, a bootlegged copy of it because it hasn't been officially released out into DVD. I had to work, you know, with just, you know, a really muddy print. I'm sure it was probably ripped off of like, you know, a, you know, a VHS that original VHS copy that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So, you know, my copy was really muddy and whatnot, but you know, that's just, you know, that's just a technical standpoint as to as for the copy that I got. Um in addition, you know, if you guys are, you know, wondering, I think um, this film is actually, it's been in the works for some time of getting a special edition DVD treatment, um, you know, full remastering, um, special bonus features, the whole nine yards, but evidently the company that was backing this DVD release actually folded after work had been done into it, so it's been an ongoing thing where the, where the writer of this um, TV film, J.D. Fiegelson, has been, you know, really adamant going to horror cons over the past few years, you know, um, talking up Dark Knight of the Scarecrow and, you know, keeping it um, very fresh in people's minds. So, actually, just um, just a few short days ago, it was reported on numerous horror websites that um, it looks like the special edition DVD of this film is back on the fast track because Lions, uh, Lionsgate is actually... Um, in discussions to pick it up, and it looks like, at this point, it's um, possible that they may be getting an early spring release for this on DVD, which is always great news, because this film has actually been really sought after on DVD by many horror fans throughout the year, so it's really nice to hear some, um, you know, new news surfacing as to, you know, the DVD of it, but, you know, all that said, um, it's not a perfect film, but it certainly is a fun one to check out, um, you know, it's not overly violent, it really uses that less is more quality, considering that it is a TV film, and I'm sure because of budget costs, but it certainly works, um, you know, like I had said, the, the runtime does, you know, um, it does get, a, tend to drag a little bit throughout its runtime, but really not that bad, and my only other minor, minor gripe about it is that, I mean, just look at my shirt, I mean, that is actually the VHS cover, like, that's pretty much the most um, prominent image that people think of when they think of Dark Knight at the Scarecrow, and upon going in this, you know, I was aware of the story, so the only thing that I kind of was, you know, pissed about was the fact that you didn't really see um, Bubba in the Scarecrow outfit, I mean, you just kind of saw that these guys were getting, um, were getting stalked, and then they would, you know, eventually just get killed off in, you know, many ways with the camera turning away and just leaving it up to the imagination, which was fine, but I just would have liked, you know, a little bit more scare moments where we actually saw Bubba in the in the Scarecrow outfit jumping out and stuff. I mean, you really, you don't really see him at all until the final frame of the film, but, you know, that's just a minor gripe. I really would have, you know, dug it just a pinch more. But all that said, I mean, it really was a fun little TV film. Um, definitely one to check out if you guys can get your hands on any kind of bootleg copy of it, at least until the official DVD comes out. But yeah, I would definitely, um, you know, I would definitely check it out because it, it certainly is worthy of at least a one-time view. So if you guys are lucky enough to find one, check it out. And, uh, you know, as always, thanks again for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate all the support this month. And uh, you can rest assured to catch another review of, uh, from me uh, tomorrow. So thanks again for tuning in. This is Frightener22.